Jr. being his high school coach, with Nick Saban being his college coach, the best coach of you know, probably all time at college, a man I've worked with for two years. Uh, so we knew a lot about Pat. I've been watching him for three years now. As you scout the other Alabama players, you know, number two sticks out, and uh, he always did on tape. Um, but really impressed us about Pat is the intangibles, everything off the field. He's smart. Uh, he's a great teammate. He's great in the locker room. He's great in the community. And so that's really what resonated with us. And then you turn on the tape, and it's, uh, you know, guys this big, that's what corners should look like. They shouldn't move like he does. He's long. He's athletic. You know, he fits everything Vic wants in a corner. He can play man. He can play zone. He can press. He tackles. He's physical. You know, he's, he was at Alabama for three years, started every, every game, 38 games, 36 and two while at Alabama. And the funny, when you watch Patrick, you know, you can get bored because they never throw to him. He only had 48 targets this year. They only completed 21 passes. So you love the movement. You know, for a guy this big, he's always in phase. He's hard to throw at for quarterbacks. And so that's what really resonated. We've been watching this kid for three years. I knew the family, I, I knew the dad, you know, I, I knew where he came from. Um, you know, we tried to hide our interests a little bit. You know, I never spoke with Pat. You know, I never Zoomed with him. I told our coaches, don't call him. Told our scouts, don't call, don't Zoom. I didn't go to the Alabama Pro Day. You know, this is a kid we targeted. This is a kid we wanted. We were very fortunate that he was there and, and we took him and we're excited he's here. He's gonna make us better. Uh, we feel he's only scratching the surface. With Vic's coaching, our coaches, you know, coaching that, that he's a, he can be one of the better cornerbacks in the NFL. I know we have other corners. He's just going to add to it. You know, in our division with these passing offenses, Kansas City rake one. I think the Chargers are six. Raiders maybe seven. I could be off. But you need guys who can cover, who can run, that are big, and have ball skills, and that's Pat Sertan. So without further ado, I'd like to congratulate Pat and bring him to the podium and uh, welcome him to the Broncos country. Pat. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first off, you know, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Payton and, you know, Coach Fangio just for welcoming me in with open arms. I can't wait to get started with the Broncos organization. And you know, it, it's still more work to be done, but right now I'm just enjoying the moment as it is. That will be on this side right here to start. Hey Pat, uh, congratulations, Eric Delala, DenverBroncos.com. George just said uh, with Vic, you can be one of the better cornerbacks in the NFL. What does it mean to you to hear him say that? And what do you think is realistic for you in year one? Um, you know, just hearing that from him, I think I, absolutely can um, just from my pedigree just from my as technique wise I think I'm an all around sound corner and I think I have what it takes to be a lead corner in this league hey Pat it's Arnie Stapleton from Associated Press hey Pat um, you know every year there's a few uh, players like yourself whose father played in the NFL and I'm wondering at what point in your life did you kind of realize that your path was going to be pro football or was it something that just kind of you know was always in the cards so to speak well I started playing football at a young age I started at the age of five um, it was something that you know just resigned with me you know just stuck with me but I, I really started focusing on it when I started getting offers sophomore year of high school and you know, of course with my dad on my uh, side just learning from him each and every day uh, you know just talking to him chopping it up with him you know helped me a lot to get to this point do you think, uh, just secondly, do you think that um, the relationship you, you and your father have with football we're going to continue, like you'll still get advice, seek advice as you begin your pro career, not just, you know, getting here, but going forward? Yeah, um, I'm going to always get advice from him. Um, he could always tell me from a right or wrongs, uh, go over tape, uh, go over certain things like that just for me to get better. Hey, Pat, George Stoy with the Gazette. Welcome to Denver. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about you coming here, and there's already quite a bit of talent in that cornerback room and, and the secondary. But you've kind of faced that at American Heritage. I know there was a lot of talented guys there in Alabama. How much has that maybe helped you, and what's maybe your mindset going into a talented, you know, cornerback room like that? Yeah, you know, we got a talented cornerback room, of course, uh, with a lot of veteran leaders. 
a lot of veteran guys that I'm looking to compete with and, you know, just build on a tremendous defense as it is. But at Alabama, of course, uh, you know, we, look, we always look forward to that competing against each other at a high level. So it's nothing new to me. Uh, I'm ready to compete and, you know, have fun. Secondly, have any of those guys reached out to you so far? And, and are you familiar with any of those guys' games? Um, yeah, um, you know, I talked to uh, Bradley Chubb, um, you know, um, Simmons, of course, you know, those guys, you know, they texted me earlier prior today. Pat, congratulations. When we watch corners of the great ones here, a lot of them talk, boisterous, in your face. You shut down people without that. How has that been part of your game to be dominant without making it real personal with trash talking? Uh, I think that's just been my character. You know, I'm a laid back person. I don't think you just have to do anything with football. That's how I am, you know, just laid back, chill. You know, I just let my play do the talking. That's my main thing. And, um, you know, I just focus on the main thing. And, you know, I think going into the game, my preparation and my focus helped me, uh, you know, play at a high level. And you've gone against guys in practice, Judy, Ruggs, Waddle, Devontae. Most guys really kind of, I'm not struggle, but that transition can be difficult. Having gone against those guys the last three years, how much do you think that can microwave and accelerate your transition to the pro game? Um, yeah, you know, going against those guys every day, um, of course, Judy, um, but all those other receivers, um, you know, it helped me get better as a cornerback technically and mentally. You know, just going against those guys every day uh, helped me prepare for the next level, of course. You know, when I go into the game, the game is much easier, uh, especially when you're going against four first rounders. So <laughs> uh, it makes the game much easier. But on the next level, um, I know it's going to be uh, even greater competition, of course. But, you know, I'm just ready and excited for it. Pat, Nick Cosmetter from The Athletic. Welcome and congratulations. Um, I'm just curious, what are, what are your first sort of memories of uh, being around the NFL? What, what are some of the first things that, uh, that just you remember, um, you know, in that experience? Yeah, well, of course, you know, my dad played in the league. Um, you know, I've been around the National Football League at a young age, you know, so I sort of got a hang of things, understood the game uh, inside and out. Uh, you know, just being around him, uh, being able to be in the team locker room, being able to experience what it's like to be around the NFL locker room at a, such an early age, I think, you know, helped mature me in such a way. You know, I just learned each and every day uh, at an early age, and now I'm here at this point. Hey, Pat, Kyle Newman from the Denver Post. So, obviously, a highly touted guy coming out of high school. How did you kind of handle those expectations to go on to have that career that you did at Alabama? And how are you planning on handling, you know, expectations of being number one pick in Broncos country? Yeah, you know, I always um, set my expectations high. It's nothing new to me. You know, I'm just always going to perform at a high level, you know, just keep my head held down, and, you know, just work, you know, because I always got a strong work ethic, so I just don't let nothing phase me. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that's what's going to be, you know, just with my work ethic and how I can, how I can contribute to the team. And critical analysis of your tape from last season. I know you had a great year, but what's your biggest weakness or area of improvement you're looking to go, you know, work on here heading into your rookie year? Uh, I know I'm a taller corner. Uh, I could work on my short area quickness uh, here and there, but I say another was well, not a weakness, um, but I could always work on my technique. Uh, that's something that you could always improve on. Um, you know, so those two things I could always focus on area of improvement. Hey, Patrick, congratulations. Zach Stevens with DNVR. Yesterday, Vic said that you can play inside even though you haven't had a lot of tape on that. Do you believe you can do that? Is that something you'd want to do? And what makes you uh, believe that you would succeed in that? Yeah, I think I'm a very versatile, versatile DB. Um, you know, just going back to Bama, you know, I played some nickel um, my sophomore year there. Um, so I got a lot of experience playing inside, outside. And, you know, I just think I could you know, play all over the field. You know, whatever they need me to fit in this defense, I think I can contribute at a high level. Hey, Pat, Sean Keeler, the Denver Post. Ed, at two quickies, you, you mentioned Judy a, a bit ago. I'm wondering how many times, uh, first off, you guys matched up one-on-one -on -one and uh, who got the better of, of who in those matchups, as talented as you guys were over there? Yeah, we matched up plenty of times <laughs> uh, when Drew was in college. Uh, you know, we all, we both had our fair share. Uh, we competed at a high level, of course. Um, but, you know, that's what, that's the name of the game. You know, we made each other better no matter what. And, you know, just going against them, I can honestly say that, you know, I was grateful for that experience at that time because you ain't going to get many matchup like, matchups like that in practice each and every day. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious, other than your dad, obviously, 
who are your next two biggest football mentors? And what's the best advice they gave you that's still stuck now as you're all the way at this level? Um, well, I got a lot of football mentors. Mentors, um, You know, just his teammates, probably like, you know, Jason Taylor, Sam Madison, you know, those guys. I learned a lot from them. Ty Law. Um, you know, I could name plenty of guys, but, you know, th those guys taught me a lot. Uh, the inside and out of the game, you know, to always stay focused, stay humble, and, you know, just keep on working hard. That's something, um, you know, they, that they told me and always stuck with me ever since then. Hey, Pat, Brandon Christel from KOA. Uh, 241 kind of following up on that. Who are players that you pattern your game after, maybe beyond your dad? Um, you know, I, I sort of, like, look at cornerbacks as my body type, uh, my frame. You know, got the same elite traits as me. Um, you know, I look at a lot of corners. Uh, I look at Ramsey, Pat P, um, Stephon Gilmore, those guys. You know, I just look at their game, some of the elite corners in the league, and see how their game could translate into mine. You know, and just focus on their strengths and their weaknesses. Well, then kind of following up, there's a guy up there, Champ Bailey, who just got enshrined in Canton. What do you know about him, and what do you know about the, the Broncos organization and tradition? Yeah, Champ, he was obviously a great corner, an all-time great. Um, you know, you know, I talked to him plenty of times before this. Uh, you know, he's a great person as well. And, you know, just the whole Broncos organization, you know, it's a very uh, well-organized um, organization, and I just can't wait to be a part of it. Pat, uh, Jeff Legwald from ESPN. I'm just curious whether it was your father or another mentor, what are the most important things these people have said to you about being a rookie in the NFL on the field and off the field? What, what, are, the, what are the important things they've said you have to do? Yeah, the most important thing is know how to handle yourself like a pro because going into college, into the league, you got to understand that it's a business-like uh, mentality going into the league and you sort of got to uh, move a certain way. Uh, think sort of sophisticated in some ways, but you know, just they, they always say, you know, just stay with your uh, work ethic, you know, always be you, you know, because you could never go wrong with just being you. So at the end of the day, you know, just stay in focus and making sure you prepare right. And, you know, just, and the main thing they told me was as a rookie, it's always a good thing to keep your body right, you know, going into getting treatment, uh, the extra things you need for your body. And I'm just a little off the wall, but they just changed the rule. Will you wear number two if they'll let you? Um, I don't know. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll see, though. <laughs> yeah, um, is it Pat or Patrick? Uh, you, you call me Pat. <clears throat> okay, and then Sertain or Sertan? Uh, Sertan. Sertan. Okay, and do you know anything about the no-fly zone? Here with the Broncos, uh, any of the players? I think you might have been a senior in high school, junior in high school. When yeah, um, you know, I know that no fly zone team. I'm pretty sure that's 2015 <clears throat> team with um, Chris Harris, Tlaib, you know, all those boys. Uh, you know, they, they, that was a great secondary, of course. Um, you know, they did their fair share here. Um, and, you know, they contributed at a high level. You know, hopefully we could bring that back, you know, just – bring that type of same swagger, that same mentality back into the defense. Thank you. Uh, Pat, congratulations. Welcome to Denver, Romy Bean, CBS Denver. Uh, you touched on this a little bit, but learning from your dad, I'm really curious about the off the field in terms of being a professional in an NFL locker room, obviously a big transition as a rookie. What are the biggest things that he's told you that you're going in, what kind of mentality you're going in with? Um, you know, like I said before, he always told me to stay professional. Um, stay within the course, you know, just stay focused on the main thing. Um, you know, just when you look back, back at it, always um, rely on your technique, uh, never get too out of, never get too complacent, uh, you know, because in the league, you're going to have your ups and downs, but always stay focused and learn how to deal with adversity. That's some of the things that he's taught me throughout uh, the days, you know, just learning from him each and every day.